Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of CSK News. Hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode. Let's just hop right into it. If you guys are watching, depending on what days you guys watch us on, on August 21st, coming up sometime soon, it should be tomorrow for most of you, we have the five year anniversary for CSGO. So please do me a favor, I wanna know how long you guys have been playing Counter-Strike, whether you're back for the 1.6 or Source days, or you guys are new to CSGO at all. Leave a comment down below how long you've been playing. I've been playing for about two and a half years now, so it's been a great game, and happy five year anniversary everybody. But more importantly, we could have huge updates coming on the anniversary along with some other cool things so first off if you guys remember the big patch update from 1.35 a long time ago this brought a huge expansion of things into the game of CSGO we had animations alongside that we had new hitbox registrations we also had a lot of nerfs and buffs for many rifles out there it was a huge update and that was 1.35 now ever since then in the months coming we are now steadily approaching 1.36 which actually should fall this week or next week very very closely to the five-year anniversary so we don't know what to expect also the valve official Steam account has gone private for now four to five days that they could be trying to hide maybe a possible expansion or a big update coming soon. Let's just all cross our fingers and hope it's not another graffiti or another brand new case or maybe something like keychains or, or something stupid like that. Let's hope for a big update and maybe a big meta change as well. Now on top of that, kind of an unrelated story by the way, also on August 21st, the five year anniversary of CSGO, here most of you North American people will experience a total solar eclipse. So just a warning for all of you guys, these are kind of rare, a total solar eclipse. Do not look at the sun. It's a perfect excuse tomorrow to stay inside, play some CSGO. We've actually had several reports. Apparently, if you look into a total solar eclipse, it can actually burn a, a, a black ball on your eye. So that's like not good. So everyone, feel free to play CSGO all day tomorrow and happy five-year anniversary. On top of that, though, we had a huge leak yesterday. We really don't know who this is actually from, but it actually clears the name of Epsilon Smuya. A couple days ago, I actually accused him, uh, because FaZe Nico did as well, of leaking the server IP of uh, FaZe Clan, where they were practicing with Olaf Meister, obviously trying to reveal more things there. Apparently it was not Smuya though because this leaker has now leaked the IPs of several teams private scrim and private practice IP servers. So I'm actually going to leak, leak those on screen for all of you but of course I'm going to block out some of the numbers. I said in my video yesterday it was actually very unprofessional whoever leaked those things if it was Smuya if it was anyone else. So of course I'm not going to give you guys the full numbers but we had several teams out there. This guy somehow got the IPs for all these teams out there. So that was a huge leak. It seems finally he going Team Rogue have announced their full North American roster. Now, I know a lot of this North American news, especially kind of lower tier teams as of right now, a lot of big shuffles is not very important to all of you, but Rogue has certified their full five-man roster on screen. A quick word as well, apparently Wrath, we already knew about this, guys. He's very, very young, and he's not allowed to play until he actually has his birthday in a couple weeks. So over the first two weeks of ESL Pro League, they will have Whitmer on their team. So that's the Rogue roster for all of you. And on top of that, we also have Ghost Gaming announce a brand new roster, pretty much a lower tier shift here for the North American scene. They're going to be joining up with Net Neptune and Connor, that those are formerly B's Money Crew players. Along with that, they have Ricks from Splice. And their final player, you guys might recognize his name, that is ZQK, the Brazilian player, who's actually gonna join Selfless Gaming. Selfless Gaming a long time ago, or several months ago, did disband. They were gonna have a Brazilian roster. He stood in for them, and yes, he actually did leave that roster. So he's formerly a Pain Gaming, and those are your final rosters for Rogue. Alongside that, Ghost Gaming, both teams are on the North American side of ESL Pro League. So best of luck to them. Either one of them are actually not expected to make that top eight or top six. So best of luck. We'll maybe one of them will be a surprise team. And also, I really want to thank all of you guys who have been using my Ninja Swap link. I haven't thanked them in a long time, so I am partnered for the next month with Ninja Swap, that's Sparkle's website. Their link will always be down there, at least for the next 20 days or so, and huge thanks to them. On top of that, huge thanks to all of you guys who have been watching my daily CSGO News live streams. We've had a lot of support on there, and I really do appreciate that. But yesterday, we did something special. Within 20 sticker capsules, we opened two gold stickers. I'll show you guys the gameplay on screen. It felt so good, but at the same time, it didn't feel quite like a knife, mainly because when you open a gold sticker. It's still pretty rare, but they're also only worth anywhere from 5 to $15 on average, unless you get a Shroud or a Stewie 2K or a Kenny S gold sticker, but it was still very fun. So I'm going to open more of those probably today or tomorrow, but thank you guys for the support. And we finally opened our first gold stickers and then our second one as well. And uh, yeah, it was pretty cool to see Flamey and Rops now in my inventory. And very last in today's episode of CSK News, I want you guys to know I'm going to be taking a break tomorrow to stock up on more news. I don't really don't want to make these episodes where there's not too many news stories out there, but as of right now, Optic Gaming is still trying to go a full European roster. They're having trouble acquiring their last player though, headshot from Team Penta. Now you guys probably heard a while ago, they had some management issues there last week where someone was trying to actually encourage their own players to leave there. He was then kicked or asked to leave the team over there, but it seems that Penta Gaming will not actually let headshot go to Optic Gaming. As you guys can see by Nell on screen, they're trying to force them to actually you know, have a larger buyout for him, as well as force him to play some tournaments with them before he actually leaves to Optic. So I really want to know what you guys think about this. It makes so much sense from a business mindset to get as much out of your players as 
possible. But when you do this kind of thing and the community can actually see you, you're not only trying to make the most out of it, but you're also making yourselves look very bad by trying to charge an overpriced value for your player. And on top of that, trying to force them to do things that are definitely out of moral context, not correct. So apparently Headshot still trying to go to Optic Gaming. Will they afford to buy him out? We're not sure as of right now. There are definitely plenty of options out there. No one really is sure as to why they chose Headshot of all the players out there they could choose from. So maybe Lowell's still on the table. Other players out there, maybe Crystal. We're going to see what happens to Headshot if actually Penta lets him go to Optic Gaming. That's going to do it for today's episode of CSGO News. Hope you guys all enjoyed. Please leave a comment down below, most importantly, so I can talk to you guys. As always, I will see you all tomorrow. That was my out, ouch, outro. Thank you.